test episode from the Flying Goat Farm podcast. Here's what's happening on the farm. It's spring. It's day 33 of the coronavirus stay at home orders from our uh, in Maryland here. And um, but outside is just gorgeous. The grass is getting green. The trees are flowering. The grass, I already said that twice, right? The grass is getting green. And so the goats and the sheep are out eating all day long and they're having the best time. They just, they look beautiful out there with their gleaming white coats and their, um, and, and the green, green grass is just beautiful. My asparagus has also started to come up. And so we're looking forward to that. The apple trees and the blueberries are in full bloom. It's just gorgeous out there. So today is my first episode. Thank you all for coming and seeing it. Um, Today I'm answering a question that was posed to me on Instagram by at Key Key Lime High. Um, He asked me, how did I get into this life? How did I get here? Um, A lot of people asked me that question. So I thought "Mm, I could talk about that for just a little bit. Um, I grew up in Southern California. I I never considered myself to be part of um, a farming family, but as I kind of look back on it now, my grandfather was um, a California orange grower during the depression, before the depression and during the depression. And my paternal grandparents were subsistence farmers in North Carolina. So I do have farming not that far back, just at the grandfather grandparents stage. But, you know, I grew up in LA, didn't have, you know, had cats, had some dogs growing up. Um, We didn't really grow a garden or anything like that. So we weren't that close to the, to the, the land. And Bill, his grandparents, his maternal grandparents had a farm in the Poconos and they raised animals and they had um, big corn fields. Then, you know, he has great stories and great memories of, um, growing up and doing the harvesting and canning with his Grammy and, you know, all that that entailed going and getting the eggs from the chickens and all that kind of stuff. So I guess we do really have some farming in our backgrounds. Um, but so, as I said, I grew up in Southern California. Um, my first kind of taste of textiles was learning how to sew and how to embroider from my mom and also through Girl, Girl Scouts. And um, then, um, you know, after college and all of that, I became a dietitian and a mortgage broker and an apartment owner and a travel agent. And finally, um, I became a public school teacher, elementary school teacher. Um, And that was all in California. Um, Since then, Bill and I have moved Um, where can I see the thing here? I wanted to go this way. I'll go like that. Um, so sorry about that. Those of you who are listening and not watching, um, I had a little problem with my PowerPoint. Um, so we were in Southern California, um, and Northern California, and then we moved to Oregon and finally to Maryland. And when we got to Maryland, I said to Bill, you know, this is gonna be my line in the sand because this has been an awful lot of moving. And um, I want a little farm and I want goats and I want chickens. And little did I know that he really wanted that too. So that's how we got to Flying Goat Farm. Um, We still had to find the animals and we still didn't know anything about raising animals. Um, One day we were at the Howard County Fair and they were showing goats and there were these angora goats that were for sale and so we decided that what we would do would be we would get two of them and we would decide if we liked like the lifestyle if we liked having goats if we could manage them or if it was just going to be kind of too much for us um so we got one of those little amish buildings that we turned into a barn and we put a really pretty fence up around our lawn and we became Flying Goat Farm. Um, those were our two, um, it, those of you who are watching on YouTube, these are our two uh, foundation goats. It was Winter, she was the mom, and Ink Blob was her son. 
and um, they oh, they're so cute. They're just very very cute. Um, oh, I was going to say that Ink Blob. Um, I did not name him. He was. They were all four H animals. Um, and so we had them for a couple of years and uh, we did really like doing it. We got a, somebody to help us shear and we were, you know, working with the fleeces. And then the big time came when it was time to have babies. And, you know, there is nothing cuter than a baby goat. They will just, you know, they make your heart just sore um, as they are running around the fields and jumping on things and, you know, they're just the cutest thing in the world. Um, and so once you start having, you know, babies and the, the fleeces started piling up. And originally I had thought that I would be using them myself for weaving or spinning. Um, and, but it eventually it becomes just like too much. The, the goats make, I don't know, like three or four pounds of fiber twice a year that they grow about one inch in length every month. So I was pretty soon I was inundated with fleeces. And um, that's when I decided that I had to send it out to a mill, get, have them make it into the roving, have them make it into yarn. And that's kind of how this whole thing started with, um, you know, dyeing up things, making yarn, having it for sale to the public. Um, eventually I got, um, I got some sheep. Um, we, uh, again, we did it the same kind of way where, um, we got two, oh no, it was a family of three, um, four H sheep and the, the four Hers were now college age and they, the parents didn't want to keep the animals anymore and they were being boarded at a, another farm that at their house. Um, so we got um, we got these three sheep. And again, it was like, can we handle them? Can will this all work out? And and it did. And then and they were fine wool sheep. And so then I got the Cormos and additional BFLs so that I could round out what we had, because you need to have wool and mohair. You can't just have mohair and that's it. Um, so the business has grown over the last 15 years. So that now I'm also um, have a whole line of commercial yarns that I do all the dyeing for. I also give classes in um, weaving and spinning and dyeing and some knitting. And so if you're interested in any of those kind of classes, please go to our website at www.flyinggoatfarm.com and you can find out any of the events that we're going to have, the workshops that we're going to have. And um, if you like this podcast, please think about leaving um, a review. Um, there will be um, any links in the show notes, and those show notes will also be on flyinggoatfarm.com backslash podcasts. Thank you for joining me today.